Hi, this is Alex. I'm the author of the Tesla Rati article about the Porsche Taycan battery issues with the onboard charger and with thermal incidents. And I would like to give everybody a little bit more context, a little bit background, without sharing more information than I did already. And the reason is I just didn't get any approval to do that. So I have a ton of more information about this issue, but the intention of this video is really to give you all a little bit more a sense and feel about why I've been publishing that article. So first of all, everybody who knows me knows that I'm trying to support the movement to electric vehicles. So why the heck is Alex publishing an article that people can use to say, you know, battery electric vehicles are not safe and, you know, there are a lot of issues with the batteries and you have to be careful with those. The reason for that is, and this is not, you know, an easy going decision for me, it took a couple of weeks to come to that conclusion and a lot of conversation. The reason is that I believe it's better to show issues if they are there compared with, you know, covering up um, problems um, as I've been written in the article and not showing them. This has nothing to do with Porsche really in terms of an automaker. It's more about the entire industry. And, you know, to be honest, I've been a Porsche driver myself and I like the Taycan. I think it's a great car. It's a fantastic car to drive, no doubt. And, you know, I feel very well and happy for, you know, Porsche to sell a lot of those. So there is no issue here. The reason why I've been starting with my mission to write about battery electric vehicles and everything around it and Tesla, of course, is because I want to support the mission, so the transformation in that direction. And I've been starting to write not only because I've been excited to see what Tesla is doing, it's also and very much about the problems and issues the German automakers have with battery electric vehicles. You know, Volkswagen, BMW, Daimler, Audi and Porsche. Um, they all have been lagging behind in terms of making that switch to battery electric vehicles. And now it starts slowly, but at least it's starting and I'm happy to see that. So this is uh, good news, good development. And although a lot of people don't appreciate what I've been disclosing, I think it has been my duty. You know, I've been thinking about what are you going to do if you read in a few weeks or in a few months about, you know, again, issues with these batteries and people, you know, potentially being harmed or they are losing a lot of money, I would feel guilty. So in other words, I found it to be my, you know, duty, really my duty in order to disclose what I've heard, um, but only if I feel, you know, 99% uh, certain that this is real. And yes, I do feel 99 plus percent certain, and there is no 100% certainty in the world. But if that is someone who's making something up, he is extremely good. And I have to say, you know, I've been working more than 20 years in B2B software sales. And people have been saying a lot of times I have a skill to read in between the lines what people tell me and to understand what is real, what is made up, what is a lie and what is the truth. And I have to say the source talking to me in three long, you know, phone calls um, is really telling the truth. There's always a risk that people are over exaggerating things, that they're stressing stuff that is in reality a little bit different. But, you know, what I've been doing in this calls is I let the person speak before I've been asking any questions. So I verified very carefully. And this wasn't kind of three calls in two days. There was time span in between. And that person was repeating very consistently, uh, precisely, profoundly, the same information and adding to that. So if you've ever seen whatever, you know, a, a, a movie in a theater, in a, a film movie, and, you know, there was a detective trying to figure out whether, a, you know, someone is telling the truth, they let them speak and they, you know, they compare what this person said before and what's saying now and what's said in a in a, in a week from now and you know by doing that you get a very good sense and feel if this is a lie or if this is true and i can say everything i've heard here 
um, is really consistent and makes a lot of sense to me. There are technical questions around what we've learned and what I've been writing in the article, and that's fine. I mean, um, I by purposely didn't dig too deep into the technical details of the challenges with the Taycan battery cells and with the onboard charger, because, you know, the article was about informing the public and not disclosing every little detail around it, which is potentially a next step here. So another important information for the audience here is that the source did not approach us. And if I say us, I'm saying there was and there is a team around me of several people from the media, but also not from the media, friends, family and other supporters who've been working with me through all of these details and challenges. So in other words, it's not only me who made the decision. It's a decision out of a group of people learning about all the details I learned. But I'm the one talking to the source and I did this pretty extensively and I may do this in the future again because the contact is still established. So yesterday I've been writing a short message to the person and, you know, I probably do this again from time to time because there are a couple of things that needs clarification. So it's not like I've met a source in a dark garage and he talked to me behind the pillar and, you know, I haven't seen the face. It's, it's very different. I actually know the name from the source. I know the profession, what he's doing and a lot of other details that give me confidence here. So the source did not approach us. A friend of mine met the source on an event and had a small, short conversation. And based on that information my friend gave to me, I've been making a tweet. And um, there was a surprising, you know, um, uproar based on that tweet. So I've been approached from Tesla already whether I would be interested to write about it. So even in terms of Tesla Rati, it wasn't me approaching them. It was the other way around, a little bit similar to that, what I had with um, Clean Technica and, you know, Fully Charged Show and even Electrauti News, all web pages I'm writing um, for from time to time. So Tesla Rati approached me and I said, you know, listen, guys, I, I just don't have enough information to say whether this is right or wrong. But what I can do is I can try to get a conversation going with that person and trying to figure out what my gut feel is later on. So I reached out to my friend who made the connection between me and the source and we had a first conversation and, you know, I started the conversation just with an introduction who I am to create a little bit of positive feeling that I'm not a person who's leaking out information if I'm not asked for it. So I, I said this very clearly up front. And in the conversations have been a lot of areas where he said, you know, you can't disclose this, you can't disclose that because it's too dangerous for me as a source. And, you know, this is a very, very important thing for me. I'm, uh, you know, ethics in my journalistic work is just something where I take a lot of care for. So in other words, I have a, a ton of additional information that would create um, required credibility for you guys listening here or you guys been reading the article, which I can't share, which is a pity because I fully understand that some people are saying, you know, this is just one source. We do not have uh, a second source, you know, confirming that there is no document here. There's no hard proof. All of that is true. And by the way, all of that is, is what I told to Tesla Rati and also what I told to another mainstream media uh, we are in touch with. And that mainstream media is willing to, you know, publish this in case we get some, you know, hard confirming documentation. And I told to them, again, this is not Tesla Rati, this is another um, big publisher. I told to them, you know, if I would be in your shoes and someone like this, you know, strange blogger would approach me and tell me the story, I would be, you know, saying, okay, um, someone is telling something. So let's be very careful. And by the way, we do not have direct touch to the source. And um, I haven't said that to create, um, you know, um, credibility. Um, I've been just saying that because it's a truth. 
And um, if you read carefully the article, you will see everywhere that I'm saying that the source said this, that the source said this, because, again, I do not have proof. Uh, I just have a very, very strong, um, you know, verification and credibility check in terms of that all of that is real. So um, the source did not approach us. Uh, we approached the source after that and um, you know it wasn't one call it was a few calls and i learned a lot and I, by the way i learned for instance the name of the department i learned the size of the team working in Sofenhausen, and i also learned to know who in that team knows the entire picture and i know where the the data is coming from and a lot of other things and uh, everybody who worked for a large company does know that if you um, you know if you open a page an internal page of your company statistics or whatever there's a tracking solution in this large companies which you know dealing with confidential data so they know exactly who has been looked at what kind of data at what point in time so I'm trying to say that or saying here uh, let's assume he would have provided some documentation to me that could be tracked down very easily to a small group of people and by doing that and knowing the size of the team they would know which department it is by definition easy going and by doing that they can track the people down and if you're identified and invited to you know an interview um, let's say with a few people and they are asking hard questions usually the truth come out and what is happening and the same happened already before with the Porsche Taycan where someone was leaking something out um, if if they if they figure out who it was it's not that you just lose your job um, I mean, every employee has signed an NDA. I did this throughout my entire life, which is binding you even afterwards. So even if you resign and you leave the company, it, it's what's very limited um, information that you can, you know, share from what you've done. And you know exactly what kind of information is confidential. And this information about issues with the onboard charger of the pouched cells in a Taycan is definitely very, very, you know, confidential information that you're not supposed to leak out, in particular not to some strange blogger or to the media. So, in other words, that person that I just mentioned from the um, Cayman, I think it was, or, um, you know, Cayenne vehicle, um, where some, you know, confidential information leaked out, didn't only lose his job, he never found a job again in the industry. So you kind of ruin your entire career. And if you look back, for instance, what Volkswagen Group did with the people who disclosed information later on um, around the diesel cheating scandal, I mean, the, the device and the diesel vehicles, um, you know, they've been all, all fired. VW Group fired them immediately. And, you know, they actually one um, a few weeks ago a court case against um, illegal firing from VW because these people just did their duty and they've been forced from the authorities to speak the truth after you know proof has been out there so there was absolutely no reason for VW group to fire them I'm explaining this in this length to give everybody here an understanding that if you are a source and you feel like there's something going wrong in my company and I want to disclose that uh, here in Europe at least you have a big problem and in Germany you have a big problem too nobody is covering up you there is no whistleblower law or regulation that allows you to provide the information what you're supposed to do is to inform internally you know the head of department or whoever C-level guy about the issues and problems that you are seeing but the likelihood that they know about them already is very high and the likelihood that because they are still you know working like that that they are covering up that they are supporting this um, strategy or this mechanism or this you know processes is very high so and if you disclose that that you have a problem with that for whatever reason you can be assured that your career is getting, you know, uh, you know, a problem, and people are not supporting you for the next career step, and you may even gonna, you know, be fired um, just because um, you told people something that they already know and that they consider 
as acceptable. I didn't and I don't um, consider acceptable what Porsche is doing right now with the Taycan from what I've learned from my source, you know, considering that this information is correct. Again, there is no 100% in life, but I'm pretty, pretty certain here. Um, to answer this, this video, I would like also to, to let everybody know that I've been approached from uh, actually a variety of people after the article was published and there is um, new information leaking out here from the VW group about issues with batteries. Um, and I need to verify that and I need to work through the details. I probably need to do a couple of calls or meetings or video calls or you name it in order to verify this as well because again it's not my mission to say battery electric vehicles are dangerous. This is absolutely not the case. You are much better off in a battery electric vehicle even if it has a thermal issue compared with a gas or diesel car you know, that can explode. Uh, batteries can not really explode in the ordinary sense of e gas explosions that we know are happening actually every day, everywhere, all the time. And the harm and, you know, injuries that they are creating are much, much worse than what you have in a battery electric vehicle where usually, you know, if you're conscious, you can easily go out of such a car, even if it burns and even if it has a problem. It didn't happen a lot. And we also, you know, have to understand that all statistics are saying that battery electric vehicle fires are not happening more often, actually, I believe, by far less often than in ICE vehicles. So, in other words, if you decided for a BEV or if you're about to decide for a BEV, it's the right decision, go for it. Do not struggle here just because there are information leaking out about battery challenges and issues, which is totally normal in the early phase of innovation we are in here with batteries. And, you know, there are new battery cells, new chemistries, new form factors, new everything coming out kind of every second month. And this will continue for a while. And it's very normal that in that situation, this kind of issues are coming up. So I have no problem at all that um, Porsche has an issue with the Taycan battery cells, but I have an issue how they deal with that because what the source told me is even if after you know that was made obvious that there is an issue with the onboard charger in connection with the pouch cells in the Taycan, Porsche decided to continue with the onboard charger that is obviously based on the information from the source creating these issues. And that's a problem. So if a company realizes that something going wrong, they should fix it. But what we see here is that they cover it up for reputational and cost issues. That's what I've learned. And to my best knowledge, this information is correct. Can I be wrong? Absolutely. I've tried the best really to validate that and, you know, to um, to check that everything is correct. Um, and um, and I, I think so. Otherwise, I wouldn't have published the article. I wouldn't have made this video. I hope this was helpful and enjoy the rest of the day.